like to welcome you to this question and answer episode. My name is David Maloney and I want to first of all say thank you to all of you who have um, sent in all your questions. Now, the most recent question I have got is from, um, I don't know if you can see that there, is from Mayo9123, which seed banks are you planning to send these seeds to? Something major like the Svalbard Global uh, Seed Vault or a local place? This project sounds like really interesting and I am looking forward to watching your updates. Now, first of all, I need to explain a little bit about what the Svalbard Seed Vault is uh, all about. So, this vault is amazing. It has stored somewhat in the region of 750,000 seeds. Now, granted, a lot of these seeds are uh, new seeds, like, for instance, new crosses, hybrids, and all sorts of things like that. But there's also a lot of kind of organizations uh, have sent in heirloom seeds to the seed vault. Now, where is that seed vault? That's uh, another good question. And it's actually about 800 miles away from the actual North Pole. So this place is cold. And it's in Svalbard in Norway. Now, what I like and love about this is it's nearly indestructible. So let's say a big nuclear bomb went off uh, near there. Well, no big deal. If the actual sea level rises, well, still no big deal. It's high enough up. If uh, an earthquake or meteorite hit, well, still no big problem because it's pretty much uh, solid. And lastly but not least, if the electricity ever failed, which can actually happen to a lot of seed banks around the world, um, also no big deal because it has a whole big continent of ice around it. So it's never going to actually um, have that problem. Right, let's do a couple of plant facts. So. All the plants in the entire world belong to something in the region of 250,000 different species or plant types. Let's just call them species. Now, these 250,000 species, not all of them of course are edible or some of them are even poisonous, but out of those there's 50,000 that are actually edible that we can use if we wanted to. But at the moment we're only utilizing around 7,000. And us in the kind of modern agriculture era, so all the people in the West, we are actually only using 15 kind of main species uh, in, our, in, the, in the food that we actually consume, which is a tiny amount of number compared to all the different types of foods that we could actually eat or develop. Now, what's even more interesting is, so this whole thing about we can't feed the world thing, give us a break, you know? Now, out of that, we human beings in the West, we are only using three plants that are, that are kind of um, giving us roughly around 65% of all the food we consume. So that is, that is amazing how little we actually use of all the different species that we could possibly use. Now, what is this vault actually about? Well, its purpose is, of course, it's a storage facility for the world's seeds. So companies and organizations and seed banks around the world um, would send all their kind of seeds to the vault itself and they can be guaranteed that these seeds will be kept safe. And these seeds actually are the property of those uh, organizations and companies and seed banks around the world. So that's the idea. So. Um, it's funded completely by the government of um, Norway. The only drawback of any kind of seed bank or a drawback of even the vault itself is that we need to have people growing these seeds and further letting these seeds adapt. So what can often happen is if you have a certain amount of seeds in the seed bank, these seeds do not develop as time goes along. They do not uh, become like resistant to certain uh, viruses and things like that. So if you keep them safe, snugly tucked away in a, in a freezer or a seed bank or some, some place like that, they're not being grown and they cannot adapt. So that's the, pretty much the only uh, drawback of any kind of seed bank. It's just very important to have um, always a certain backup because you never know what can happen. Look at Iraq, what happened is there was war and they lost all their actual seed banks. So that is a real shame. All that diversity is now lost. If there's a natural disaster or if humans are dumb enough to, let's say, carry on the way we're going and the climate change is of course happening and there's different 
temperature variations in different uh, parts of the world now. It's just really handy to have these seeds in case something happens. Um, but as I said, seeds do adapt and they do need to be out there in the environment growing. So this is only a backup facility. And I must commend the guys at Norway who actually came up with this idea, actually paid the money funding and actually built the thing because they did a fa fabulous, fantastic job. And they, you know, the, the actual, you know, the foresight of them doing that is just amazing. And you know, <laughs> you're gonna love this by the way, they are not allowing any GM seeds in their vault. This is the world seed vault and they're not allowing any GM seeds in their vault. And I just think, brilliant. Now, they store actually about 500 seeds per vegetable variety. So, let's say you have one of the worst uh, ones, which is sweet corn, for actually needing the largest population for the genetic diversity to be kept uh, going. You actually will have 500 seeds, that's two and a half times as many seeds than you would actually need uh, to keep that population going. So you can have two and a half goes at it, well two, two goes at it. And the good thing about this vault is that it runs uh, very efficiently, it's very cheap to run. There is electricity involved because they want to keep the temperatures just exactly minus 18 degrees because uh, many of you know the more exact the temperatures are, uh, the longer the seeds actually last. And also they've excluded all the oxygen in the packaging processing. Uh, they've excluded all the oxygen, so the seeds actually last even longer. So we're talking here 40 to 100 years. Um, roughly, that's an estimate, but that's what you're kind of looking at. Because it's never been done before, so we don't know how long seeds actually last in cool storage. But um, people do can tell by actually doing germination tests and so on, that seeds do degrade after a time. But my hat goes off to them, and I'm so delighted that they're doing this. Now the question that you asked is, am I going to be sending uh, seeds to uh, this vault? I'm going to intend to do though, but, but the problem is I need to have a certain amount of seeds. So I have to first create a seed bank uh, and part of an organization of course, and organizations are allowed to send seeds to the seed banks. And the plan what I'm doing is this organization has many bases in all around the world. And in India is the kind of main base. And what I'm planning to do is, I'm going to try to, to set an example there, so, so start the project there and then have a kind of an example to show the people uh, in those bases all around the world how it could be done. So now the idea then is that we can then as a group, an organization, send those seeds uh, to the seed vault as well, as well, but create our own seed bank, that's very important, the, the guys at the seed vault uh, can't stress enough that people have to have their own uh, seed banks and have to keep their seeds going. Um, so that's pretty much it. That uh, I hope answers the question. Um, so if you want to ask any other future questions then just ask away down below in the comment section and I will make a short video on uh, yeah, your question and answer your question for you. Thanks for watching.